Sunday to everybody, this 27th day of June 2021, what the church calendar tells us is the fifth Sunday after Pentecost. Good to have everybody here this morning as we worship our risen Lord and Savior together. Uh, a couple of quick announcements. You've seen it posted on all the church's uh, Facebook pages as well as uh, some various other ones, but we are having a running camp uh, in July. Uh, July 19th through the 22nd from 9 in the morning to 11.30 a.m. It's being sponsored by Trinity and Sharon and Canyon United Methodist Church. Uh, it's for kids in the first grade through the eighth grade. Uh, and if your youngster signs up for it, they get a t-shirt, they get a medal provided by Mr. Bill Norton, but they also get a water bottle and they get a drawstring bag. So if you have a child or know a child, live beside a child, work with somebody that has a child, and they've not yet signed up for the camp, uh, let them know. Uh, you can sign up for it over at the Parks and Rec Department, and the camp is completely 100% free, <coughs> so make sure they come out uh, for that if they are so uh, in inclined to. Um, I'll be coming back for it, actually, so I'll be there that first week. Um, and I suppose that we should go ahead and address the elephant kind of in the room uh, this morning. Uh, and I want to say, uh, yes, I do think NC State got the wall end of the deal. <laughs> All right, but you got announcements you like to make, sir. I do have an announcement. Uh, as you folks saw last week, little buddy over here, Gray, led the music in church on Sunday. And as a strummer, it's one of the goals. I told him, I said, well, you know what? I need you to get up there and lead a song, and I'll give you a gold capo with your name on it. So he earned his gold capo, so Gray. Your, uh, there's your capo for your guitar with your name on it. And this is a plaque from the Strummers. We thank you for what you've done and the time you've put in for us. Just promise me one thing. Keep it going. Don't let it go. Keep that thing going. So, President, we'll turn things over to Sonny. He's going to get our hearts and minds ready for worship.
exalt you, Sovereign One, for every blessing of yesterday, the gift of this day, and the promises of our tomorrow. Grant us an enduring faith as we strive against doubt, difficulties, troubles, and despair. Endow us with contagious joy that uplifts the downtrodden and inspires hope in you. Increase in us as we gather to worship the faith and courage of the prophets, the love of Jesus, and the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. For it is in your majestic name we pray.
Sunday Pastor Mark, and God bless everybody.
We want to touch the hem of your garment, O God. Forgive us for being afraid to touch those who come to us for hope. We want to love the whole world. Forgive us for ignoring our neighbor. We long for peace. Forgive us for the pain we inflict on our families and friends. We want to share with those we love and like. Forgive us for walking past those who need you the most. Forgive us, loving God, that we do not excel in everything you call us to do. Give us grace to touch those who frighten us, to carry the bread of life to the hungry, to offer the blessings of the kingdom to everyone we meet, just as you have graced us in Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Now, friends, I want you to hear and believe this good news that Christ Jesus died for all of us while we were yet sinners. Proving without a shadow of a doubt just how much God loves us. In the name of Jesus Christ, friends, you are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Well, friends, we are a people of faith. And as people of faith, I want to invite you now to join me as we say with one voice our statement of faith. Those things that we believe in the very depths of our souls, those things that make us different from everybody else, those things that's contained in our Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from He 
took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha Kum, which means, little girl, get up. And immediately, the girl got up and began to walk about. She was 12 years of age. At this, they were overcome with amazement. He strictly ordered them that no one should know this and told them to give her something to eat. My friends, again, this is the word of God for you and I, the children of God. Thanks be to God. Do not fear, only believe. All week as I have read and reread this passage, and have tried my best to prepare what truthfully up to this point has been the hardest sermon that I've ever had to write during my time here. That phrase kept echoing in my mind. Do not fear, only believe. Every now and again, after worship, one of you would come up to me after church, and you were kind enough to say, I felt like you were preaching just to me. And I would sometimes say, no, I was preaching to me and letting you overhear it. <laughs> and you may have thought I was kidding, but I wasn't. And if you have any doubt about the veracity of that statement, think about this passage that I chose to preach on this morning. You and I are a few days away from some very big changes. And so for one last time, I invite you to listen in as I preach to myself. Now I'm sure many of you have heard the phrase, hanging on by a thread. There are plenty of explanations for what that phrase means. It means to be in a risky or unstable situation. To be in an uncertain situation unlikely to succeed. If something is hanging by a thread, it usually denotes that it's ready to fall apart or that situation can change in an instant. As we gather this Sunday morning, I think many of us feel that the future is unstable, uncertain, and certainly one that is changing. And with that, we may emotionally feel that we are hanging on by a thread Maybe we have felt that way for quite a few weeks. Well, friends, in our story this morning, there are three people hanging by a thread. There is a little girl who stood at the end of her short life. Now, we don't know any of the details. Mark says nothing to us about the severity of her suffering or how long she had been sick. All we know is that she is 12 years old, that she is at the point of death. She is hanging on by a thread. Then there's her dad. Like any parent whose child is sick, he is desperate to find someone that can help. Fighting his way through this great crowd, he finally reaches Jesus. With nothing but a plea for mercy, he falls down at Jesus' feet and he begs him to heal her. He is hanging on by a thread. And then there's the woman who is beset by the condition of bleeding. Suffering has been her constant companion for just as long as that little girl has been alive. She has been through 12 years of seeking doctors, 12 years of spending all that she has, 12 years of nothing to show but more pain and empty pockets. She is hanging by a thread. All three were desperate. All three had great need. All three hanging on by a thread. And I think we can all agree that that is not a secure position to be in. Unless, unless that thread to which you are hanging on is connected to Jesus. That is how it was for the people in our text this morning. Metaphorically for Jairus and literally for the woman, the thread to which they reached out was wrapped around the Son of God. Reasoning that even Jesus' clothes could help her, the woman touched his threads and she found healing. Do not fear, only believe. Believing Jesus had the power to heal his daughter, Jairus reached out to Jesus and fell at his feet. Do not fear, only believe. The little girl simply heard him speak and was restored to life. Do 
Do not fear. Only believe. Each of them found the help that they needed in Jesus. And in doing so, they offer us tangible images of saving faith and instructions for our future. The nature of a saving faith, friends, is that it looks to and listens to Jesus for salvation. The woman was not healed by the act of touching Jesus' garment just because he was wearing some powerful relic. No, it was her faith that made all the difference. He told her as much. Daughter, your faith has made you well. It was this same faith that led Jairus to fight through the crowds and beg Jesus for help. In both of these cases, the person had heard about Jesus and looked to him. They believed he had both the ability and the willingness to save and both received what they saw. He healed the woman. He raised a little girl. He saw their faith and he acted to save. You see the pattern? Look. Believe. Receive. Friends, you and I, as we look towards the immediate future, are hanging by a thread but I don't mean that as a negative, but simply as another way of saying that all of us are living by faith. We are all facing challenges, whether they be public or private. We are certainly facing the unknown in regards to our faith communities and our churches. We may not know exactly what the future has in store, but we believe, don't we? I mean, after all, that is why you are here this morning, isn't it? I mean, sure, part of it may be because it's our last Sunday, but I hope that that is not the main reason why you are here. You are here because you believe. You are here because you know you have a need for a Savior. You are here because you seek healing, whether it be emotional or physical or spiritual. You are here to give thanks and praise in song and in prayer. That is why you are here. That is why you have come so faithfully in the past, and that is why you will continue to come in the future. That is why folks continue to tune in to our Facebook stream and all three of the churches that I serve. We gather because we have heard the promises of Jesus, and we hang on to those promises even when it may only be by grace. And what has he promised us? He has promised healing. If not now, then when he returns. He has promised resurrection as he raised Jairus' daughter in our text as he himself rose on Easter morning. He has promised grace and love and mercy and joy and hope and life abundant. Friends, these promises are proclaimed wherever folks gather for worship. They were proclaimed from this pulpit well before I arrived here, and they will be proclaimed from here well after I leave because these promises do not change. These last four years have been nothing short of wonderful for us because of the relationships that we have made with each other, the ministries we have shared together, the love that we feel for one another, but also because I knew that three times each Sunday, three times, I was going to be able to worship with my brothers and sisters in Christ. That we were going to be able to give thanks to our Lord for our blessings and seek his counsel for our difficulties. That no matter what happened that week, no matter the circumstances and the challenges and the difficulties we may have faced, that we were going to come together and worship the one that never changed. We looked to God together. We professed our belief in his son together. And we received the power of the Holy Spirit together to go deeper in our own faith and to go out and win more for the kingdom the following week through the missions and ministries of our churches. We did it each and every week. Look, believe, receive. And you know what? That's exactly what's going to happen next week at 
Sherry United Methodist Church. And that's exactly what's going to happen next week at Trinity United Methodist Church. And that's exactly what's going to happen right here at Camden United Methodist Church next week. And the Lord will and the creek don't rise. It'll happen next Sunday in Mount Olive and down in Mandy as well. <laughs> Nothing about it changes, friend. The work goes on. The mission continues. Every week. Until Christ returns or he calls us home. We love each other. We worship together. We serve our community. And we do that not because of the man or the woman behind the pulpit, because that changes. We do it because of the one that never changes. Think about these words from Lamentations chapter 3. But this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercy never comes to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul that seeks. No, friends, we don't know exactly what the next few weeks will bring, other than we know that there are going to be some changes. But in those moments where sadness or doubt or anxiety or worry creep into our minds, don't listen to it. Don't listen to a word of it. That's the work of the enemy. Instead, I implore you to look, believe, and receive. I urge you to listen to Jesus. Do not fear. Only believe. Hang on to Jesus. Come to him in faith. Cling to him with confidence. Cry out to him for help. Trusting that he's already come for us once. And he will come again. With faith in that promise. That thread by which we all hang will be more than enough. Do not fear. Only believe. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. <coughs> Friends, let us pray. Dear Father, thank you for the compassion and healing you give us in Jesus. Thank you for your grace, mercy, and steadfast love. Give us the wit and wisdom to share these wonderful gifts with others, especially those who need them the most. Have compassion on your church. Heal it from false teaching, unkind acts, and unfaithful witness. Raise it up from sloth and sin. Provide for its needs so it may generously share your grace with others. Make it lovely and righteousness to draw many people to the beautiful Savior. <coughs> Fill the people of this and all congregations with gentleness, generosity, and compassion. Help us reflect Jesus' goodness to everyone we meet. Let our church become a haven of grace to everyone. At last, it's summer. At last, we're less afraid to travel and enjoy your beautiful world in the company of those we love. Thank you, Lord. Keep us safe, make us joyful, and grant us peace. There is so much hatred, violence, injustice, and selfishness in our world, dear Lord. Heal the fever of unrighteous lust for power and retribution. Bestow wisdom, prudence, and goodness on all earthly rulers, especially in our own land. Inflame them only with the earnest desire to love justice, seek mercy, and walk humbly before you, their Lord and King. Clothe all who wear the sackcloth of suffering with the clean linen of your salvation and joy. We lift before you the needs of those on our minds this morning, bringing them to you now, either aloud with our lips or silently in our hearts. Give them some.
such confidence in you that they constantly turn to you for help. Grant to all who love and care for them such tenderness and skill that suffering and loneliness are eased, and hope and faith are strengthened among us all. We give you thanks for your constant presence. Through seasons of constancy and even change, you are with us, calling us into deeper waters, calling us together in your spirit of unity, calling us out of ourselves into the world to serve others. Grant that Pastor Wayne and Lily, both now called into new waters of service to these congregations, might hold fast to unending love and mercy as a buoy. A love that promises to hold them as they go where your spirit leads them. May the churches that receive them be communities of mercy and grace. May these churches experiencing loss and change hold fast to the promise that your mission is bigger than any single pastor, local church, or annual conference. Grant that such a promise would bring both comfort and discomfort. Comfort in a season of change and discomfort as it drives us all to love you and each other more. Hear and graciously answer our prayers, dear Lord, and is, as it is best for us and most glorifies your holy name. As we pray together the prayer you taught all of us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. members 
members of Christ's universal church, will you be loyal to the United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries? If so, say, I will. As members of this congregation, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, and your service? If so, say, I will. Members of the household of God, I commend these persons to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. We give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love as members together with you in the body of Christ and in the congregation of the United Methodist Church. We renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, and our service. Christ Jesus take you by the hand and lift you to life. 